Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Okay. Um, we've been getting some requests for, for some simple yet effective flies. And uh, this one's just a latex caddis pupa. It's a very simple fly. Um, requires basically two materials and a bead, but it catches a lot of fish. Um, as you can see, the, the hook is in the vise kind of funky right now because I'm going to show you a good way to put on a bead. So I've got a Daiichi 1120 in size 14 in the vise. Um, I'm using a 2.8 millimeter tungsten bead on this and I think on this one you could probably go up to a 3.3 millimeter um, but this one matches up well as, as well. So the reason I have it like this is I've got one of these fancy bead tools that, that you can use to put beads on hooks. You don't necessarily need this but it makes it a little easier to put the bead on the hook. So I'm just going to take it and you put the small side of the hook on or small side of the bead on first. So as you see on these beads there's going to be a small hole and a large hole. And the small hole is the side that you want butting up to your hook eye. So when you set it in your your vise you really don't need the hook point covered up. I see a lot of people putting their hooks in their vise like that. And sure, that would work, but really, um, you, it's going to be harder to get back down into the bend of the hook. Uh, in fact, this is a fly that's designed so that materials go all the way down the bend of the hook. You don't want to go too far down because then you're going to start missing fish because you've, you've uh, put materials too close to the barb or the point. So I'll show you a way to get it down just right without, uh, without having to mess with the part of the jaw there that's in the way. Um, I'm also using Danville 70 denier thread. So um, in threads, you know, we, I could go on for hours and hours, but uh, when, when you have threads that are marked with denier size, um, it's pretty simple. The bigger the denier, the bigger the thread. So. What I'm going to do is, is if you take your thread from behind the hook point, as you see it, and I've got it, I'm holding on to it with my fingers here, and the bobbin side is here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold on to the tag end and start wrapping around the hook shank. Okay, so you can see I took a few wraps forward, and now I'm just going to go back over those wraps and down a little bit. And now I can just let my thread hang. It is completely secure and I can let go of that tag end as well. So you can either break that off or just trim it off with scissors. And now what I'm going to do is because it's, it's how it has a material wrapped down the bend of the hook. What I like to do is take my, my hook out of the vise and reseat it like this. It just makes it a little easier when tying. Now, I'm going to make touching turns of thread almost all the way down the bend like this. So a caddis pupa is a, uh, you know, it's a bug that kind of looks like a grub, kind of looks like a maggot almost. And so that little curve, that little extra bend in the hook really makes a, a difference. It kind of gives a little bit of life to the fly. Okay, another really cool material we're going to be using is Kylie's Nymph Skins Caddis Green. And basically this is uh, thin cut latex. And you know, it, it's harder, harder than you think to find the right thickness of this stuff um, to tie this style of fly. And if you use a surgical glove, yeah, technically that's latex, but also it's very, very thin material. So what I'm going to do is just take off, a, cut off a little chunk of it probably about four inches long, five inches long. Uh, the longer the, the piece of latex you work with, the harder it is going to be to, to wrap it around the hook chain. So what I've done is I cut the end piece into a point. And I'm going to stick that point, I'm going to probably go up just a few wraps and tie that point in right here. Now, one of the things you can do as you wrap back is I'm going to pull this tight so there's literally no buildup 
at all where I tied that piece of latex in. So another thing, I'm not sure if you can see it, but my thread is kind of twisted up a little bit. And if you wrap twisted thread on the hook shank, it's going to kind of create a bumpy body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to counter spin this wire to flatten it back out a little bit. Maybe just two spins and now you can see I'm working with a much more flat thread. Um, if you're a left-handed fly tire, kudos to you because that will, un that will naturally unwind most of the factory threads. So anyway, I'm going to now just wrap my, my body up. One thing about these, these pupa is that um, I'm going to want to build up a little bit of a taper. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to go back and forth on the body until it tapers a little bit from thin to thick from the back to the front. And as I do that, I'm just going to unwind my thread every so often. Okay, so that's plenty. So now I'm going to reposition my hook in the vise about like that and leave my thread right by the bead. So now, as I wrap this forward, on the back you can add a bit of tension. And I'm just going to kind of go over the top of each previous wrap you're not going to you know wrap it up budding end to end I'm gonna overlap this and as I go forward I'm going to let off a little bit of the tension of this latex and so what you see that does is it creates a nice looking rib just like a little insect in the water and it's really easy to pull this stuff too tight So by the time I'm up here by the head, I, I have almost no tension on it at all. So once I get up to here, now I will pull it tight and just make one wrap over the top. Usually is enough to tie this down. But I'm going to make two wraps over and then several wraps in front of the head. As you tie flies, as you get to, to know these patterns, you'll, you'll come to realize that the more you preserve your thread wraps, the better. So now when I cut this off, I'm going to pull it tight, trim it, and now the excess kind of sinks back in behind the bead. The next step is just to put a really basic dubbing uh, collar on this. What I've got is Nature Spirit Hairs Mask Dubbing. And uh, this is just the natural color. Um, this is probably one of the most versatile colors in fly tying. You can tie all kinds of bugs with this. And this Nature Spirit stuff has a little bit of sparkly yarn mixed into it, as you can see. Not too much, but just a little bit of, of Antron. So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit and put some on my thread. As you can see right there, just enough to kind of get the thread dirty a little bit. And I'm going to dub down maybe like a, a two inch section on this. And as you dub your, your, your dubbing on, don't twist back and forth like this. Think of it as like a screw. So you twist it one direction and untwist it the other direction if you wanted to take it off the thread. So I'm going to put a lot of pressure down and just twist it one direction all the way down. Um, so once I have it like this, I'm just going to wrap directly behind the bead and that will kind of send some of that dubbing right underneath the bead and that's fine because it kind of locks it in place. And you know, you really don't need a ton of dubbing and you can see I've got guard hairs there. I'll trim those up a little bit if I want. And once I get right behind the bead, I will just whip finish it. And you can find that technique on a video that we've done already as well if you want to find out how to whip finish. So the final thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of velcro this is on the Stonfo brush and comb tool and we're just going to pick out some of those fibers. A caddis pupa in the water has a bunch of little straggly legs and wing pads coming off of it so don't worry if it's not very clean. 
you don't necessarily want this to um, have a bunch of material but you can see how when you pick this stuff out it kind of just drapes the body a little bit now I've got a few unruly guard hairs I'll just come in here and trim those off or pick them out and there you go the very simple latex pupa